three, two, one. Welcome to the North Pod, Olga. Thank you for having me. Ukraine, you are in war, yeah? Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about your life day to day. You work as a handler or fixer for fixer. Uh, for different uh, media outlets. Yeah. And so you travel around inside the war area. Yeah. Every day, yeah? Yeah, that's what I do. It's a bit crazy. Well, times are crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's... But I, I do what I feel I need to do because the world needs to see truth, what's really actually happening there. So no, no other way to show it, you know, only to be there and to show. To show, yeah. Yeah. From day to day, how does it look like? What you do last, last week? What did you do then or a week before that? Well, uh, last week we were at uh, Kiev region. Uh, you know, this uh, small towns that were released uh, because Russian troops a uh, little stepped back yeah. from north uh, of Ukraine and they released um, the outskirts of Kiev. So, and we saw consequences of Russian occupation in our cities. Uh, I believe everybody heard what's happened in Bucha, what was there, and uh, we saw this massive destruction, a lot of grief that Russia brought to Ukraine. So. Can you tell me a little bit about what you see uh, about the war crimes and uh, and the crime against the civilian people? Um Yeah, we, lo- we saw a lot of this uh, in Bucha. A lot of people were just executed. You know, they found bodies with hands tied up uh, behind their backs. Yes. Uh, and these people were just shot. So uh, not only adults, but children also. Children? Children, yeah. Uh, they found bodies of killed children. In Bucha, Repin, uh, Hastomel, uh, Brodyanka. And backbounded as well? Bound. Well, I cannot tell for sure about children's bodies. No. Uh, I mean, if they were, if their hands were tied up behind their backs. But uh, what I can tell for sure it uh, is that we definitely have cases of rape children. I mean, children. they raped, yes, not only adult women. Not only adult men, but children also. Six years old children. So uh, that's that's really you know crazy things to hear. But we we spoke with general prosecutor, and it's it's official cases. It's not something. It's not rumors. You know, no. that's what actually happened there. Uh, they found uh, bodies with. Um, Got it off genitals, six years old children. No, I mean, yeah, They tortured, raped and tortured. Yes, kids. Yes, kids, and killed them. Yeah, uh, it's already and more. You, you seen this yourself? Those? Uh, no, no, no. They cleaned up the place pretty quickly. So uh, all these bodies, they just were collected and buried you know mm. uh, but uh, it's official reports so we, we we spoke with general prosecutor and also I know a woman who is uh, head of uh, hospital in uh, Kiev yeah. uh, hospital for women's health and uh, they she saw cases like this uh, for those who survived I mean but children were raped women were raped And she witnessed it. I mean, the cases. Why do you? Why? What's happening? What's happening with the Russian soldiers? They don't have any boundaries at all. 
They can just run around and do what? Well, what we can see, I think they don't have boundaries at all. I don't know why do they do this, but the truth is they behave not even like animals. You know, what we saw after they withdraw, yeah. it was just awful. It was horrifying. It was so awful that normal person couldn't believe in this. I mean, it's impossible to believe in, but that's true. Yes, that's, yes, what's, yes. That, that, that's what actually happened there. I mean, I don't know why do they... I, I believe the, the reason is that they have official permission to do this. So they officially allowed to do such thing, and they don't consider us as the human beings, Ukrainians, I mean. Um, that's why they do what they want, and unfortunately, they want awful things. They want to destroy us, to break our spirit, and they want, I think they want just to kill as many Ukrainians as they can, and not only kill, but also torture. They make it, they make it just for fun. Hmm. All the killing, I mean, and everything. Do you have any numbers, how many civilian people have lost their life so oh, far? Oh, it's hard, it's very hard to count, because uh, only in Mariupol, uh, as you know, Mariupol is surrounded. And yeah. uh, it's, Mariupol is a kind of a big city where half a million people lived before uh, war. And it's dozens, thousands of people were killed just in Mariupol. Yeah. So if 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 we speak about whole Ukraine, it's very hard to count. I don't know, because they cannot even collect all the bodies from Mariupol, so nobody knows for sure. In Bucha, in Irpin, we found uh, these common graves. Yeah. You know, where, where they, yeah, yeah, where they buried uh, dozens of people who were executed. So we <coughs> don't even know how many of these graves we have at the territory they are currently occupied. Yeah. So, so it's <coughs> nobody can tell for sure how many people were killed in this war, civilian people and children, because they talk right now, Ukrainian governments, government talk about. Uh, more than 200 children killed in Ukraine. Uh, but just in Mariupol, more children were killed. Okay. Just in one Mariupol, in one city. So. You think it's like a, it's a Russian tactic to kill civilian, kill kids, raping? I don't think or it's they tactic. They, they just um, control over the people. Well, I think uh, that um, at first place they wanted to capture Ukraine, you know, to occupy a uh, whole country. Uh, but they've met such strong resistance hmm. that um, they realized they can never, if even if they can capture Ukraine, they can never hold it. That's why they changed their tactic. And uh, I guess they now try to destroy Ukraine. And uh, the scene with killing people, I believe the purpose of it is just to break our spirit, mm. to make us afraid of them, you know. But with the Ukrainians, it works opposite, mm. you know. Uh, the the hardest they try to break us, the stronger resistance they mm. have. Mm. So, and also, they more than aware of what they do. That they more than aware that they target civilian people. Um, we had an awful accident in my hometown, Kramatorsk, a few days ago last week. Uh, for, for the last few weeks, Kramatorsk is a hub, like a Kramatorsk railway station is a hub for evacuation people from the whole region, Donetsk yes. region. And uh, last week, uh, 4,000 people uh, were at a, a railway station. They were waiting for a train, evacuation train. 
and Russians hit the station with a missile. And uh, at least 50 people died and um, five children also. So it, it was uh, only women and children because they're not allowed, you know, men to uh, evacuate because, yeah. So it was only children and women. And they they actually knew who was there because uh, everybody knew that Kramatorsk uh, is a hub for evacuation. Mm-hmm. And they targeted hit with a missile. And this is going on everywhere in your country now? Uh, not everywhere. War crimes. Is, yeah, war because crimes. This, this, is a prop, this, this is a war crime. When you fire a missile into a crowd with civilian people, that's... But yeah, I mean, that's what they do. I mean, they hit civilian people, they hit maternity hospitals, uh, they hit hospitals, they hit cars <laughs> with um, inscription children on it, they hit cars with red cross on it. That's war crimes, but that's what they do. They just don't have any boundaries. I mean, they they make they've already made every war crime possible, I guess, in Ukraine. Yeah, and the rest of the world is just sitting and watching. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, it's a tricky question because uh, we are very thankful for everybody who helps, you know, Ukrainian refugees because uh, a lot of millions uh, of people lost their homes and now they have where to go i mean because of people who help uh we have weapon uh and we are very very thankful for this weapon because it's very helpful but still uh ukrainians we fight not only for what we love we're not fight uh, we're, we're not fighting only for ukraine uh for our homes it's like a war for you know, for democracy mm. in the whole world. And mm. uh, the truth is, if Ukraine fail, um, Eastern Europe is going to be next. I mean, Poland, Lithuania, and other countries, uh, they already trying to threat, you know, other countries. Mm. That's what they do. And if we fail, who knows who's going to be next? Mm. He's definitely not going to stop. Uh, so we kind of feel of uh, we, we we feel ourselves as a as a as an alive shield, yeah. you know that uh, that Europe use us well not to use us but uh, we like an alive shield for them and yeah. everybody is hiding behind our backs from Russians. So how is the situation for? Um the civilian people inside Ukraine now with food, medicine, is... Well, it depends on the region. Yeah. I mean, uh, of, of places, cities uh, that are occupied, they have very, you know, desperate situation. Uh, and uh, all the villages next to the front line uh, Especially Mariupol is the worst, if the worst city in Ukraine, because they don't let any humanitarian uh, a- corridors. No. You know, they don't let anybody in uh, to provide citizen. Russian Mariupol. Yeah, is Russian. locked it down outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's very hard because they they shoot cars with Red Cross on it, as I've told. So mm. it's like a you know hard challenge to deliver humanitarian help to people there. And they try, these people try to evacuate from Mariupol, uh, but it's they are risking their life when they do it. We have a lot of successful cases of evacuation, and what we've heard from these people, it was just unbelievable. You know, constantly, constant shelling, uh, lack of food, water, medicine, a uh, few people died because of famine in the Mariupol. Famine is breaking out there. Yeah. yeah, they were starving and they died because of it. Mm. In in Mariupol, I mean, because uh, it's more than months 
uh, already. Mm. I mean, since uh, they surrounded this uh, city. In your job, you're traveling around and um, helping different uh, media outlets to to document it. This have you been across many uh, things you documented pure war crime? You seen a lot of it already because somebody have to pay for all those crimes. But are you gathering up when you're talking about the shooting cars with Red Cross on? Also, what does the world see it? Well, yeah, we we try to show as much as possible uh, because it's it's awful what's happening there, and I think that that. There should be consequences for them. Sure, uh, but it's hard to. I don't know how would they do it. I mean, uh, who knows who did it in Bucha in Irpin? You know, we know that only it was <coughs> Russian army, hmm. but how to to find those who are responsible for these crimes? Mm, so, in uh, like at outskirts of Kiev, uh, at the highway, we saw. A lot of it was like a line of cars. Yes. Mm, civilian people tried to evacuate from villages around this uh, highway. They they just were trying to to stay alive, you know, to evacuate and to live their normal life. But uh, Russians shoot everybody in this line, so it was like a line of cars and bodies next to cars, bodies of civilian people and children included. So why do they do this? We don't know. But they just shoot at everybody. So it's all of them do this. We also saw cases when they just uh, drove over car with a tank. So we saw plenty of cars like this that were driving over. So it took a, a whole line with cars and just plowed it over? Not a line. I mean, just w- we saw uh, a lot of cars on the road. They just <coughs> uh, saw one car and why don't we drive over a tank, on, you know, uh, while people in this car? So that's what I saw with my eyes. I mean, consequences of this mm. uh, destroyed cars. You can just see the tracks, you know, on this car because it's totally smashed. Mm. Mm. So... The word war crime uh, confused me a little bit because in, in in the in the wording crime, you know, but uh, <laughs> people never get punished for it. Everybody t- just talk about war crimes, war crimes, war crimes. But what do the world do? Why? If it's war crime in Vietnam or if in Afghanistan or in your country right now, but everybody can talk about it and make movies about it. But who is responsible to for these war to, crimes? Yeah, yeah. But who in the world is it? Is it me? Is it you? Is it uh, is it America? Is it Norway? Is it Sweden? Who is gonna make sure the correct people get the punishment? Because obviously. You can see now we have big war crimes. They don't shoot at military installations, they shoot at civilians. Yeah, well, uh, first person who to blame is obviously Putin because uh, he's a chief of his army. But, um, you know, I'm not a fan of, uh, of this vision that he's the only evil in Russia because he's not the one who loot, he's not the one who rape, he's not the one who pull the trigger. That's what his soldiers do. Mm. Uh, All these young boys, uh, I've heard a lot of uh, opinions when people just feel sorry for these young soldiers, Russian soldiers, I mean, Mm. because Mm. they're just 18 years old boys and uh, what they know, but these boys, they rape children they kill, they have choice, you know? I mean, obviously they have orders to invade Ukraine. Yeah, yeah but not But kids. when they in a village and they see children in front of them, they have choice. 
sure. to shoot or let them leave. Yeah. And they choose rape, shoot, torture. That's what they that's their personal choice. Sure. Yes. So um but if we speaking about who's the one to make <coughs> sure that they will be punished, well I think I think you know Putin invade uh, Ukraine eight years ago, mm. so this war isn't going already for eight years. He may, uh, he did it f- first time in um, eastern Ukraine, mm. but everybody thought that it just doesn't matter. It's just local, uh, you know, civil war, which was not true. It was Russia who invaded Ukraine. They started this war, and they hadn't received a proper response from from the world hmm. from leaders of uh, other countries uh, because reaction of the world we see now uh, i truly believe that uh, they should react reacted like this eight years ago hmm. uh, because what he do now putin what he does now uh, he does it only because he sure that he can do it because nobody ever showed him that it's not allowed, mm-hmm. you know, to, to mm. invade other country, to start a war uh, in other country, is in independent country. Mm. Uh, so he tried to do it eight years ago. He never had a proper response from the world. So he just, he had no reason to, you know, don't to do say, it, yeah, 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 to yeah. don't do it. That's why he did it. Yeah. And that's and, that's and a na- still, na- the nature of a bully, you know. They do it just because they can. Yeah, he do, he, he he do it just because he can, and uh, he still, I, I believe he, he he still feels like he can. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, all the sanctions, they are very helpful, but it's not enough. I mean, it's not small local war we're dealing with. It's almost World World War Three. I mean, it's uh, it's huge what's sure, happening, sure. and it's not only war uh, between two armies. It's natural genocide of Ukrainian nation. I mean, they kill us just because we Ukrainians. Uh, they kill us because we want to be free. We want to be independent. Uh, Ukrainians never were aggressive. We never wanted to fight. Uh, we don't need this war. We don't need fighting. We don't need anything, you know, of this. We just, what we wanted, what we truly wanted and still want is just to develop, to make our own choices. Hmm. Uh, how to live, you know, in our country. We hmm. want to have a choice which language to speak. We want to... Um, choose the direction of our development, you know, without uh, Kremlin say us what to do. Mm. Uh, but they just cannot, you know, accept it. They want, uh, they want to see, uh, you know, puppet president mm. uh, in Ukraine. And <coughs> then they want us to be, um, I believe they want to see Ukraine as a buffer between civilization uh, and Russia, mm. because they need, if Ukraine um, will be as developed as Europe, for example, they will have no more excuses for uh, Russian's misery. Mm. That's why they need to keep Ukraine miserable. Yeah. And I believe they don't even need to capture Ukraine to <coughs> occupy it all for this. For what they, they, I believe they changed their plans. What they want now is to just to keep this war and going, because uh, which country can develop with the war no, no in way. it? So no that's they feel pretty mm, satisfied, I guess, even with uh, what they have now. Hmm. When we look at the, at the telly or we read newspaper, whatever, yeah, we see a, a lot of headline about the war in your country. But if you're going to explain for me and the listeners, what is war? 
because what in one way I don't think because we're so far away we, I don't think we understand the horror I think we just think it's okay something you see on telly or see in a newspaper you see a photo of Putin or you see a put, uh, photo of this Jens in NATO and then yabbing away and uh, and uh, the real victims are the people yeah regular people are victims in this war uh, I mean nobody can understand what what is war unless this war is just behind your door yeah. it's really hard to under- <coughs> understand I cannot blame people who don't understand it well it's just um, we had you know our regular peaceful life we had jobs uh, families marriages children grandchildren just life and we were pretty happy with this and we had our houses beautiful houses beautiful cities beautiful towns uh, parks parks squares yes everything it was ukraine was and still is a very very beautiful country and just one day one crazy dictator decided that he just can take it from us and he came with all his weapon and just kill whoever he wanted to kill uh, children women man he 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 think that he can tr- torture torture people uh, and it's just we could never imagine something like this i believe people who who who've been through this horror they just could never imagine that something like this can ever happen to to them S- because you know all this terrifying things we just saw it already in the past when uh when we saw all this movies about world war to about this concentration camps mm, we saw it's already gone forever in our world we didn't think that it's possible in 21st century get to happen again yeah yes but that's what's happening again all this terrifying things that fascists did to people they do these things now uh, history is just repeating himself yeah history is just repeating putin is new hitler i believe he's even worse mm, because he, he you know he he call himself th- th- they blame us <coughs> ukrainians in being nazis yeah which is not true because our president is jewish yeah. and uh we never killed anybody like ukraine never invaded other country we never uh you know we, we we never killed any i don't know jewish people because they are jewish we have a lot of uh, different nationalities in ukraine and everybody is more than welcome hmm. in ukraine so we were more than peaceful <laughs> in ukraine but uh, i don't know why they just use it i don't know as a lie they call us nazis just because we want to speak our own language hmm. uh, we want to have our own culture we have our own culture and history but they just try to take it from us and we protect it hmm. we defend in our culture and uh, just because <coughs> we have it they call us nazis and fascists hmm. and they are trying to blame us for this war like we are the one we were the one who started it but it's just nonsense like we lived for more than 20 years in a peace and then we just decided to bomb ourselves uh. it doesn't make sense at all uh, but still for the last eight years world bought it i mean this idea that it was a civil war inside ukraine which is which was never true he he uh, yeah because you have the the two states up uh, in east yeah Yes, yeah. yes, to and regions. and uh, and the story you can see in media or whatever uh, before this war was there was like those two states 
want to stay with Russia? No, that's not true. Uh, the thing is, Putin told that he wants to protect uh, Russian people uh, from Ukrainian Nazis. Well, he, he wanted to uh, make everybody believe uh, that everybody who speaks Russian, for example, language, are threatened in Ukraine. But that's not true. My first language is Russian, not Ukrainian, because I'm from Donetsk region, from the region where we started at first place eight years ago. And I always, uh, I always have spoken Russian. Yeah. It's my first language. And I never, ever felt threatened in Ukraine because of speaking Russian. No. It's not true at all. I mean, half of Ukraine speaks Russian right now. But the truth is, uh, Ukraine never was as united as we are now because of Putin. I actually started to speak Ukrainian just because uh, they tried to take it from me. Mm. I never spoke Ukrainian before this war never used it. I mean, I spoke Russian. But after they tried to take it from me, I was like, no way. <laughs> Ukrainian is my language and I will show that it's still alive. Uh, you know, just it, it was like a part of personal resistance. Mm. And uh, I'm not the one in Ukraine who feels like it. I mean, a lot of people, they now, uh, you know, speak in Ukrainian as a protest, mm. because Putin say that he will protect everybody who speak Russian language. And uh, <coughs> his protection means war. Mm. So that's why we just don't want this language. We don't want him to protect us, you know, mm. uh, which means to kill us. The life you have lived the last eight years, you also been in a militia before, yeah? What what has it done with you? You're still a young lady, and and you uh, and you're willing to die for your country, and you you to, you put your own life on the line, and you when you go out. Well, yeah, when it started eight years ago, I was 19 years old, uh, and uh, well, war came to my home. I never choose it, you know. Uh, I just felt like I just I couldn't stay. Uh, aside of what was happening. It was my home. It was my country. I realized how much I love it. And I'm that kind of person who never run away from such things. You know, when when something, when somebody or something I love is threatened, I will defend as I can. Uh, so that's why, yeah, I've spent a lot of time on the front line and I've already lost count of friends who died in this war. And uh, of course, it's like a scar on a soul and heart forever. But what can you do? I mean, run away is not an option. Uh, even now, running away is not an option for me because it, it wouldn't hurt less. You know, it wouldn't, I think it would even hurt more if I would stay aside of what's happening because I, I need to help my people and my country as much as I can because who else would do it? The thing is, one person is weak and helpless. But when it's thousands of us, we can do something actually. Mm. So every person, even me, is a small drop in a big ocean of changes mm. so and every drop counts for sure but when you go out on the front line um, your life of course is in danger if if uh, if uh, the Russian get a hand on you you're it's not, not looking good for you. <laughs> no, it's not good at all. I mean, uh, my then biggest you can expect fear... Just rape and torture and well, probably get killed after? Yes. <laughs> for all this eight <coughs> years, my biggest fear was uh, being captured mm. by them. And when I was, not right now, but uh, when I was uh, on the front line uh, first two years of war, back in 2014, 2015, and 2016, I even had, you know, a uh, hand grenade with me, you know, just to not to be captured. We always thought that it's better to be killed than captured, especially for young girl. 
Sure. Uh, because I definitely know that I'm not the one who can manage, you know, aftermaths, what they mm. can do to me. I, I definitely cannot, c- couldn't uh, live with this. So that, that always was my biggest fear. And uh, also being wounded, injured, lost, uh, to lose a hand or leg, it's also very scary as well as lose your life. But it never stopped me. Not not because I reali- didn't realize what can happen to me. I do realize now because it's my life. It's what I see every day, almost every day. Uh, I have a friend who lost his leg. He's not the only one. I have a lot of friends who, who've been injured, mm, a lot of friends who died. So I'm pretty aware of what can happen to me also. But there's no other choice. We are taking these risks because otherwise we cannot do anything if we will be afraid and running away. Are you ready to take your life if you get compromised or you are in a position you can see the Russian can capture you now? To take, you mean, their life? Your own, if you see it's... My own life. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's very hard to say because I had this grenade, but I didn't know if I was really ready to do this mm. because it's a very hard decision. Uh, so, but right now, after what I saw, I don't know. It's very hard to say. <laughs> I, I I I don't have. Uh, but you have to think about it when you when you go out on the front line. And you, you're making films and you're doing stuff. You well, I think that now, um, first of all, I try not to get close to Russian troops. So real danger for me is, you know, being hit by random missile or shell or whatever. So uh, it's uh, I probably more likely will get wounded than mm. captured. Mm. I mean, because we also, uh, you know, try to cover war as safe as it possible in these circumstances. Yes, but... But how is the dynamic in, in the war now? It's, uh, <coughs> can uh, do you experience uh, Russian troops storm in and try to capture or it's more or less you're here, they're there and, and they send rockets and more? Well, first day of war, it was unclear who are where, you know, you can, you could be, you could have been easily captured by them because uh, they actually moved pretty fast Mm -hmm. and deep into Ukraine uh, territory. Uh, But right now it's more or less clear, you know, where where they are. So it's more about shelling and (coughs) missiles right now. Mm, but they are trying to to move further into our territories from east so but we also ha- we always have uh, you know ukrainian army who can always tell us hey please don't go there because it's dangerous so we always check with them we, we, we never go anywhere on our own i mean we never make this decision without checking with military what the situation in the area right now so we're trying to keep ourselves as safe as it's possible and trying not to get ourselves killed mm. but when you see all the stuff you're seeing you know and and uh, and your fellow people in ukraine does it change do you get angry do you get the hatred against the russian people uh, how do you manage this one? Because when you see kids who are raped and killed, uh, it's doing something with you. Of course, it's very hard to see. It's all almost impossible to realize that it's true, because it's you know beyond everything. Um, since it's not you know this war. Uh, it's not one month of war for me, it's eight years. And uh, I'm already, I've been through this stage of hate, hate 
for them. Um, in 2014, I realized that they are not brothers f to us. And now I realize that they are not humans at all. So I don't feel anything for them. All I feel is just, it's a wild mix of emotions and feelings, pain, fear, um, hate also. You know, everybody in Ukraine right now feel very insecure because you are not safe in Ukraine, in every part of Ukraine, because even so all the war zone is on the south and east, they still launch missiles to the western part, mm -hmm. parts of country. So <coughs> there's nowhere in Ukraine where, where you can feel safe. We can hear sirens, air raid sirens, all the time, everywhere. Because and every siren means that somewhere in Ukraine, missile is flying, yeah. you know, above yeah. us, and nobody knows uh, where it can land. And if we have enough uh, air defense systems to to hit this one missile, <laughs> also the truth is the aftermaths of. Uh, those missiles who actually been hit and landed without getting to target are pretty awful too because uh, one hit missile that uh, you know that that was hit by air defense system and could destroy like at least three houses i mean block houses yeah, with yeah. a lot of apartments in it because they are massive, they are huge, and all this uh, explosive wave can just, Break you know, down, destroy yeah. yeah houses, windows, doors, and uh, so. But I, I could only, well, not imagine. I saw aftermaths of uh, rockets, missiles like this that actually, you know, aimed their target. So it's awful what they do and they try to not only to destroy our infrastructure they use these missiles just against civil people hmm. just against regular civilians could you imagine yourself sitting in your house just right now and missile can just hit your house and it will burn down to ashes and kids yeah. and in, in kids in there yeah they are playing in garden, I don't know, and shelling, just random shelling start. It's impossible to believe, but that's what we are experiencing just right now. Mm. Just now. It's happening in Ukraine. You're just on a short visit here in Norway now, and you're going back to Ukraine next week, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going back to Ukraine next week. My parents, they fled from Ukraine on the first day of war, because my hometown is Kramatorsk, as I've told, so it's war is still there. And right now they are refugees in Norway. Mm, so, and I'm just visiting them because I really need a break yeah. <laughs> from this. I need to just switch my mind for a little bit because it's very hard to proceed. I feel very exhausted emotionally, mentally, because it's just too much. It's too much. What do your parents say about you going back to Ukraine? They are very extremely worried because, but, well, they know who I am. <laughs> they know that I will never, you know, stand, stay away from this. I will always be there with my people and I will always help. And the thing is, the hardest it gets um uh, the more we want to be mm. you know in the field helping trying to change something because things like this they not should happen <coughs> in the biggest country of europe in 21st century it's just wild for sure it's crazy uh, kharkiv was a beautiful city a beautiful city and 
it's almost totally destroyed by Russians, Russian missiles, Russian rockets, Russian shells and everything. It was as beautiful as Krakow, as Praga. Mm. I mean, really beautiful. Could you imagine destroyed Praga or destroyed Warsaw? It's awful. You cannot imagine this because this city is there beautiful, but well, Kharkiv was as beautiful as this city is and it's totally destroyed. Almost totally destroyed, I'm sorry, because Mariupol is totally destroyed. Yeah. Every, literally every house in Mariupol has been hit, literally every house. Okay. Everything is broken. Everything, everything. In Mariupol, that's uh, the eastern eastern Ukraine, yeah, it, it's totally surrounded. I've, I've told about this, yeah. <laughs> and uh, every house was hit, every house was burned, so... It's like this city is no more there, but people are still there, hiding in basements, trying to find a way out. Is there still a lot of people who cannot get out, who want to go out? But uh, yeah, some of them just afraid. <coughs> to, you know, a to lot so of them too afraid. Yeah, they afraid are, to start uh, run. Yes, because it's dangerous. They always realize. They realize that they it. It can cost them their life, you know, but and it's hard decision. You can never tell w what to do. I mean, it's hard to decide what to do because sh they shell, uh, they shell in this, they constantly shell in, mm. you know, Mariupol. So uh, what can these people do? They live in basements. Some of them just don't have uh, their own vehicles to run the way to, to drive away from this and they're just waiting for somebody to help them. Hmm. Because this has to stop. It's just, it's insane. It's wild. It's, and it's happening in Europe. Hmm. You know, in Europe, it's already close. It's, it's, uh, it's unreal, you know, it's same when I'm sitting here talking with you now and, 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 Your life, your country is at war, but it's almost, you cannot, it's not easy to understand. When you sit it's impossible to understand. Yeah. I mean, this minute we talk, somebody is dying there. Mm. No jokes, literally dying. Mm. I believe this minute another missile hit another residential area, another child get injured that's what's happening just in a minute we speak every minute so they have they don't give us a break from this it's ongoing all the time yeah all the time all the time constantly and starting to be trouble with landmines now as well La landmines, minefields, they put out uh, explosives for the kids yeah, to pick up. Yeah, that's what we uh, try to do in released areas uh, <coughs> because they left a lot of gifts mm. to us, uh, which is explosives and uh, our rescue services, they try to demine territories so that people can, uh, can come back to their homes. Uh, but actually in these areas, it's not like they have, they still have ho homes because ev everything is destroyed. Mm. But at least they can try to rebuild mm. everything. Uh, but it's still pretty dangerous uh, to come back to Kyiv region, to Nigiv region, because uh, they left explosive, explosives even in children toys. That's what they do. They just hide explosives in toys so that when child pick up this toy, it explodes yeah. and uh, it can just torn apart, you know, hands and everything. What happened inside a mind of a person who put explosives inside a I don't toy. know. We w don't understand it. <laughs> We just, huh? I don't know. I, 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 I literally, I have no answer to this question because I don't know. <clears throat> We cannot understand it. Why 
it's not easy to understand evil, but yeah. What we try to do, we try to protect our children. You know, Ukrainian army, they try to protect even puppies, <laughs> even dogs and cats from this. I mean, no jokes. Ukrainian soldier can risk his life, you know, to protect even animal. Yeah. <clears throat> Not talking about children, but what they do, they try to kill as many children as they can. They just, they just don't care. Was it like the, the inscription on some bombs? This is for the kids, or, or was it? Uh, yeah, in Kramatorsk, when they hit railway station with a missile, uh, in this railway station, four thousand people were trying to evacuate, and uh, what we saw. Uh, on this part of the rocket that were uh, that still was there uh, is in inscription for children. So, uh, but it uh, they meant that it's like a revenge for children of Donbas because all these eight years uh, they claimed that Ukrainian army is killing Donbas children, which is not true because the only army that kill children is Russian army uh, but they always try to make it look like Ukrainian army kill Ukrainian people which is just nonsense uh, and it was like a revenge so they hit Ukrainian children with a missile and they totally understood what they do hmm. and also in Mariupol uh, I believe that everybody saw this theater uh, where people were hiding with children mm, in the basement of the theater from bombs, from Russian bombs. And they had uh, huge inscriptions outside the building, uh, children. Hmm. They were very, very huge, this inscription, so that you can see it from the sky, from your plane when you... And still, they hit the theater and the theater was destroyed. So when they target hospitals, they target uh, humanitarian cars with Red Cross, they target cars with inscription children on it mm. on purpose. Mm. They realize what they do and they still do. You could, <coughs> you could, um, you could run away, yeah? and move to another different country now, would you choose to stay behind? What, what motivates you? Because uh, it's normal to be afraid. It's normal to want to save yourself. That's a normal feeling people have. But you choose not to tap in on that motion. You you rather stay and fight, yeah? Well, I, I'm a live human being. I am also feel scared, you know, I'm afraid. I'm frightened to death of uh, these bombs and everything. And uh, every time I hear explosions and I, <laughs> I hear a lot of this last years of my life, I'm shaken and uh, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm very afraid of this. But my motivation is love because I love Ukraine I love my people uh, I love my culture, my history, my language my flag even I love everything about Ukraine and uh, my motivation is love because I, I'm not agree, you know, I disagree with what they do um, with us I'm, t I'm, I'm just trying to protect what I love and every Ukrainian soldier has this motivation I don't know what motivates Russian soldiers to do what they do. I believe they have no motivation. They're just trying to destroy. And they they do it just for fun. It's fun for them. They laugh at this. Because we spoke with um, a lot of people, you know, who, who, uh, who've been under occupation and they managed to evacuate somehow. And what they told us, it was just, they just made it for fun. They shoot people for fun. They left 
the main the, people run around and they should use them as yes, a target? Yeah, they shoot people just for fun. They get drunk. First of all, they loot. They steal everything that they can. Uh, they get drunk and then uh, they just shoot and rape for fun. That's what they do. We, I, I don't understand it. I cannot tell what they have in their minds, but they do it for fun. And that's what we saw, you know, that's what people saw, that's what people experienced. Mm, and it's wild. It's very wild. We, and we just cannot, we cannot let it be. We just try to, we feel so sorry for Ukrainian people who, who are still under occupation because we realize what's going on with them and we cannot leave them behind. We're just trying to protect our people. We're trying to protect our children from being raped, from being killed, from being tortured. So it's impossible for us to stay, you know, to, to stay away from this. So our motivation is love. And to, desire to protect and defend what um, what is the Ukraine for you home Ukraine is home for me uh, I don't want to leave Ukraine even this break you know this week away from Ukraine is hard for me uh, it's my second or third day in Norway And I already want to come back. Uh, Norway is a very beautiful country, uh, but it's not home. Ukraine is home. And mm, from all my friends who had to flee Ukraine, uh, nobody wants to stay where they are right now. Even so, they are in beautiful countries, Poland, Germany, France, Spain, Norway. Uh, but it's not home. You know, Ukraine is our home and all we want is to come back to peaceful Ukraine. Mm, and uh, we would love to travel, you know, around Europe to see uh, Norway, to see other countries, but just as uh, travelers, as tourists. You know, to see, to visit, and then come home. Uh, so, yes, Ukraine is home. Mm, and just, I just want to live at home. Hmm. It's not too much to ask. Yeah, it's not too much to ask. I mean, <laughs> but these days it feels like impossible because uh, I feel like I feel like I'm on a big trip. You know, and all I want is uh, I, I want this trip to finally end <laughs> uh, because during my work, I stay in hotels uh, because we are moving around country, driving around Ukraine and uh, we stay in different hotels. And all I want is just to come back home. But I cannot because my home is under shelling. It's very dangerous there, and even if I somehow get back to my hometown, to my apartments, to my my bed, I still I, I wouldn't feel safe because it it would be really dangerous for me. So um, yes, but all I want is just to to wake up and realize that it was just a bad dream. Very bad, very long, very realistic, but dream. And I believe uh, a lot of Ukrainians feel uh, feel the same way because it even so it's already like 50, more than 50 days of this war. We still cannot believe it. It's too much to proceed. We literally cannot believe that something like this can happen in 21st century in Ukraine. It feels like a very bad dream. What do you think have to happen to end this war? Or, or what should we, uh, everybody think? And you talked about <coughs> your b big uh, motivation is love. And, and 
you put your love is like a drop of water in a big ocean and if it's many enough us something gonna change what 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 would well what i know for sure is that putin will never stop uh somebody has to stop him he will not stop himself uh we trying to resist him and russian army as much as we can but um they have more soldiers you know they have more weapon more rockets more everything and we definitely need help because we fight not only for ukraine but for democracy even in europe and we really need more help because the reaction of the world we see now the world should have reacted like this eight years ago mm. and now they should do more uh we ukraine you know ukraine is begging uh nature to close the sky uh because children are dying every day because of russian bombs they drop these bombs from their planes it's not okay to invade other country and do things like this um and we actually we really don't understand why everybody acts like you know like it's normal i mean uh Of, of of course nobody says that it's normal but we think we feel like reaction is not strong enough because mariupol is still happening hmm. it's wild and it's still happening they still bombing our cities they still killing our children they still rape our women and children and nothing is happening i mean This is a big nightmare. Yes, it's a big nightmare and um all these sanctions uh Why do you think uh, the rest of the world don't do anything? Why 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 what's the reason? I, well, what what do you think? Uh, well, uh, I'm not speaking on behalf of Ukraine. <laughs> I'm speaking no, just no. for myself. Uh I think uh, that they're just afraid nobody wants to be responsible for starting world war 3 mm. i mean if uh, any other country will fight in this war it will be world war 3 and nobody wants to be the first one who step in mm. but the truth is that this war has already started and putin was the one who started it mm. uh so maybe he just doesn't have any equals in this world i mean mm. nobody is strong enough to resist him uh because well javelins is good enough <laughs> i mean <laughs> they are very helpful and uh useful but it's not enough if they don't want to send troops in ukraine at least we need more weapon mm. we need planes we need warships we need tanks and everything to stop putin here because you are willing to do the job if you get the correct that's what we do i mean that's what we already do i mean we sacrifice our best people our best man we sacrifice our cities and towns to protect europe too mm. from this wild you know i cannot even call them humans from this wild not people not animals i don't know who they are because if if world don't stop him here he will continue to do it in europe he will continue to move forward because he has this uh crazy dream about reuniting mm. territories of uh ussr and as we all know poland was in this ussr so uh, and uh, 
more countries. So that's what he wants. He wouldn't stop if he once he once Ukraine fail if Ukraine fail. So he will continue grab other countries. Mm. At least try to do it. He will try to do it. He he's totally insane. Uh, but I can tell. I can tell for sure that Ukraine will never fail. We will fight till the end. That's that's who we are. We will never, never give up. So <laughs> we have this joke in Ukraine, you know, that uh, world will resist Putin till you last Ukrainian soldiers alive. <laughs> Because, yeah, that's Ukrainian army is one who who's actually fighting. So we need at least help. with this mission we met before today and uh, we met uh, with some friends here in Funes who are helping people back in Ukraine do you see a lot of that because a lot of people uh, donate money or medicine di- different things yeah but when you're traveling around do you see some of this help coming to the civilian people Yes, of course, we've seen a lot of this. And uh, I can tell that without this help, <coughs> we we wouldn't make it. I mean, it would be really hard because uh, especially first days of war, when everything was uh, so unclear, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow e- and if, if there's going to be tomorrow for us at all. Uh, Ukraine was just paralyzed. I mean, everything was closed, every shop, everything, and all millions of refugees, um, they really needed this help, and they got this help. So without it, it would be just impossible for us to to do what we do. I mean, it's, it was really great to see uh, all the volunteers who helped uh, Ukrainians on borders and uh, not only on Ukraine borders but uh, also further in Europe uh, in Norway a lot of a lot of refugees are right now here and uh, they can live here just because people help so and we are very thankful for this do you think it's important Uh, groups like this we visited today to, uh, to keep on working because it's not look like it's going to end tomorrow this war. Yeah, it's it's extremely important because what you do is you literally save lives. I mean, for all these people, imagine if they had nowhere to go, no, n- they have nothing to eat, they have no medicine and everything. It would be humanitarian catastrophe. I mean disaster uh, and uh, of course it's very important but we hope that it's gonna end uh, fast we we don't expect and we don't want it to continue for years we want it to end as fast as possible and we want to just come back to our homes and you know not to bother Europe with our presence here uh, so yeah but what uh, all these people and organizations do is extremely important. Uh, what's happening is Ukraine is just beyond even imagination. You know, it's awful. Uh, people's houses, people's homes, they are destroyed. They literally have nowhere to come back. So uh, they have no jobs. They've lost everything. They are very lucky that they um, hadn't lost their lives, that they're still alive, uh, and they can leave just because people help them. Because otherwise they have they they wouldn't have other choice than to come back and probably get killed here in Ukraine. So yes, it's very extremely important what all these people do. We're gonna put uh, put a link uh, in this post uh, where people can contact or help but uh, but then you can vow for if you're helping 
this organization is actually helping the people in Ukraine. Yes, yes, it is helping. Yes, it is. And it's very important. Yeah, I think many people is thinking <coughs> when war is chaos, you know, if I give something, does it actually go to the people who need it and stuff like this, you know? Yes, yes, it does. I mean, it's re- it really does. A lot of people, I saw it with my own eyes in all these uh, centers for uh, refugees. Mm. Uh, they have uh, all the help from foreign organizations. Mm. You can just tell and see that they have medicine, uh, that they have clothes, food, and everything they need. Even diapers for babies, mm. all this, uh, you, you know, everything for children. So it's, and that's very important because they have nowhere to get it. I mean, all these people, especially from Mariupol, uh, they sometimes they have no clothes on them i mean i saw mother with child covered just in blanket mm. with blanket because they 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 were running so fast you know they had no time uh, to grab anything so they have nothing once nothing. they yeah nothing at all nothing at all i mean and all they can get uh is help from organizations like this and mm. they actually get it so of course it's important. Could you imagine young mother with a baby on her hands, with no food, no diapers, no medicine, no, no, no not everything, and wh- where they can with no money they cannot buy it. So all they can hope for is just help from other people, and they get this help. It's crazy that uh, private people have to give this help, and not the Norwegian government. <laughs> Well, in Ukraine, the situation is pretty much the same. And, well, for me, the good thing is that regular people, they do care. They do care enough to help, to organize (coughs) themselves and uh, all this help. And what they do, it's huge. It's not just, you know few bottles of water for refugees it's huge massive help and it's very important and it shows that this world you know still has hope even so such awful and terrifying things can happen here this is something you want to say to the listeners help Ukraine. (laughs) That's all I can (laughs) ask for. Uh, Because we don't want to, uh, you know, to bother people with our problems. Uh, We just have no choice right now. We literally have no choice. Uh, We want this to end as soon as it's possible. And we want to just come back and live our own lives. Uh, because we can manage everything. We just need help right now with this. Thank you. Thank you. Sharing. And um, maybe you can keep in touch when you, um, you're down in Ukraine again. You yes. can give some updates, Musa. Yeah, of course. Now, a little bit speechless, but uh, yeah, we. Uh, <coughs> We leave some links in the description here, and uh, if people want to help, if they want to do something, can contact there. And you have to keep your chin high. <laughs> yeah, that's and, what I do. And uh, try to be strong. We are strong. I mean, Ukrainians are strong. I, I think that we showed it already yeah. to through to the whole world that we are strong. But we all strong, you know, when we united, we strong together. Mm. I mean, the truth is, uh, we are brave, uh, but we would never do it if we would be on our own. So, since we have a uh, world behind us, I mean, su- supporting us, we feel even more brave we, we we feel like we have power you know to fight mm. back mm. thank you thank you
хочешь Как тебя зовут? Алиса. Что ты хочешь сказать? А где ты сейчас находишься? Где, где? В Дмитрии. Тебе здесь нравится? Mm -mm. Хочу домой тебе. А кому ты хочешь передать привет? Ложки светят. Прокидайся до Ясне моє сонечко.